In this video, you are going to learn how to build a worship keyboard rig. My friend David Faltzgraf from sundaysounds.com is gonna help us identify the sounds, the software, and the hardware that every worship band needs. And watch to the end because as a worship leader, you're gonna have so much clarity on how to better equip and empower the keyboardist in your band. Coming up. My name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry. Today, I'm joined by my friend David Faltzgraf of sundaysounds.com. This guy is an expert when it comes to worship keyboard rigs. He and his team are working on amazing products that are gonna help you produce the same sounds that you hear on all the popular worship albums from Hillsong, Elevation, Bethel, etc. Okay. <laughs> So the way this video is gonna work and how we're gonna unpack this all for you is first, we wanna talk about the sounds we are trying to achieve in worship when it pertains to our keyboard. Because we wanna have kind of that end goal in mind mm -hmm. of where we're going and then from there, we're gonna reverse engineer the hardware and software required to achieve that same sound that we hear on all the major worship albums coming out, whether it's from Hillsong, Elevation, Bethel, etc. So David, Let's talk about the sounds we're actually trying to achieve. Sure. It can be like a really intimidating time to be a worship leader or a worship keys player because the keys parts on a lot of modern worship albums now are a lot more complex than they've been in the past. There's all of these different elements, all of these different types of sounds, and it can feel like, how, where do I even begin? How do I start to play these parts myself or to empower my keys volunteers to play these parts? Don't feel like you have to do everything at once. Don't feel like you need to jump from pianos to Hillsong Young and Free synth programming in a week. So let's start off by just nailing down a couple foundational ingredients that could just be a next level up regardless of where you're at now. So let's start off by talking about the piano sound. This is the most basic ingredient of most modern worship keys rigs is gonna be a good piano sound. So let me start off by demonstrating kind of just a nice basic versatile piano sound for you guys. So this is a really straightforward sort of balanced piano sound and there's so many different piano textures now and there's so many different plugins and different uh, sounds built into keyboards. The important thing is to not try and nail this vast diversity of piano sounds right out of the gate. If you find one piano sound that's nice and versatile, that feels good to your keyboard players, whether they're playing quietly or at the biggest moment of the song, that's the most important thing. If you find one great sounding acoustic piano sound, stick with that and then you can worry about effects and nuance later on. Great. So now the next go-to ingredient, something you're probably familiar with, at least on some level, I'm talking about pad sounds. A pad sound can serve as the glue in your mix. Now there's a huge range of pad sounds available too, but if you find one type of pad sound and you identify one type of terminology with your keys players, find a nice warm sort of worship pad that serves as the glue. It doesn't get too bright, it's not too bassy. It sort of sits in the middle or the, or the low mid range and just holds everything together. Make sure it still has a little bit of motion to it so it doesn't just sound like this drone that's going on forever, but you don't want anything that's gonna distract or pull away from what anybody else is doing, whether it's the vocals or the electric guitars. Um, so this is a nice, just simple warm pad. I can hold chords out get infinite sustain as long as I hold the chord, and then these nice smooth sort of subtle transitions as I change through the progression. Let me show you what it sounds like. especially like transitioning between songs, like you said, those more mm -hmm. soft or delicate songs, or coming out of a sermon, having, yep. you know, at the end of the prayer. Yeah. Just 
it, it, something about that I think really connects with, with people's hearts during worship. And it's a really common prevalent sound. Like, yeah. I mean, it's all over modern worship music. It has been for 15 years. If you can really nail a piano sound and a pad sound and empower your keys players with those two ingredients, then there's a lot of ground that they can cover. Cool, let's move on to the fun stuff now. Okay, so let's talk about arpeggiated and time-synced kinds of sounds. This is stuff that's often the undercurrent of a lot of big epic worship songs, and it's also at the forefront of a lot of more upbeat songs, like Elevation Worship, Hillsong Young, and Free kind of stuff. Now, you need to be running to a click in order to use these types of time-synced sounds, but if you are, then it can add so much energy, some intensity, and drive as you're playing. So let me start off by demonstrating a chord arp. So I'm gonna play a chord and then the arp is gonna pulse that chord for as long as I hold it out. And then when I move to a new chord, the arp will move right along with it. This is really common in a lot of Hillsong worship slow songs, stuff from Mosaic MSC, Elevation Worship, it's all over the place. Um, really, really cool sound. If you have a click, you definitely wanna figure out how you can nail this sound. I feel like those are definitely like the foundational sounds we find, the piano pads and the arpeggiator. Uh, is there anything else? I mean, there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do. It just depends on where you're at with your team, the technology that you're using, the skill level of your volunteers. You've got awesome stuff like you can throw some synth bass in there. There's all sorts of different textures that you can throw into your mix. But if you nail pianos, pads, and if you figure out how to implement some cool arpeggiated or time synced sounds, then you're well on your way to nail the, at least the vibe or the impression of most modern worship songs. Now we have a clear picture of the sounds we're trying to produce with our keyboard rig. Let's reverse engineer those sounds and, and how, how do we go about producing them with the right uh, hardware and software that mm -hmm. we have available to us uh, today. So where do we start? So a great place to start is with the gear that you already have. There's a decent chance you can identify a nice pad sound, a nice warm piano sound inside the keyboard that's already set up at church. But when you're ready for more, if you want more flexibility, if you want to do cool stuff like arpeggiators, synth bass, then you're probably going to want to look at updating the keyboard gear that you have. Now, the traditional approach here has been to buy the latest and greatest hardware keyboard. Um, and there's some great options out there with amazing sounds, mm -hmm. but there's some real cons, I think, to that approach. You're locked into the sounds, generally, that come with that keyboard. Sometimes they're not super volunteer friendly or intuitive. And when it comes down to it, oftentimes that's a really expensive approach to take, especially if you go for top of the line uh, hardware keyboards. So that's why I tend to personally favor a software based approach. Mm -hmm. With software, you can use almost always the keyboard you already have as the input source and then use a computer as the brain that actually generates the sounds. With the software approach, you have tons of flexibility to use different softwares, to buy different plugins. It's totally expandable, super flexible. Mm -hmm. And because you can use a lot of the gear you already have, oftentimes you can get a, a, a new rig up and running for like under $100. And then you just have to take the time to invest in learning how to use it and setting your volunteers up for success. But if you're on a tight budget, shoot, the software here on my Mac is Main Stage 3. It costs $30 in the App Store. You can use any MIDI keyboard or controller with it, and it comes with like tons and tons of built-in sounds, and it's super customizable. So obviously the cost of entry there, the biggest one is a Mac. You have to own a Mac computer, but a lot of cool worship leaders already have a Mac. Mm -hmm. So if you can have these core ingredients and understand the potential, then the software route, in my opinion, is the way to go. Yeah, I made the mistake once as a worship leader um, to, I thought we had to get a Nord keyboard and I love Nords like they're wonderfully made keyboards they're very red yeah, they're very red they look very cool red. you just like oh, man the stage looks so much cooler with a Nord on it um, and they play great yeah and they're awesome I'm not gonna discourage anyone if you have an extra three to five grand to drop on a keyboard like that go right ahead and do it but 
understand you have to learn how to use that thing to its fullest potential. Mm -hmm. um, and I just have found as a worship leader now, and what I recommend all the time, get a MIDI controller like this, get a laptop running software, and yep. that's all you'll need. It's so much user, more user friendly. So walk us through, because really, when I look at this rig we have here, like this is, this is the ideal. And I think a lot of us can kind of piece together maybe what we already have, or we can find even mm -hmm. more budget friendly solutions elsewhere than some of the, the hardware the, you, that you have, but then, but I still want you to just walk us through these building blocks of this setup. Yeah, totally. So you need an input source, something that's gonna tell the computer what to do, and that's a keyboard or a MIDI controller. It doesn't need to be labeled specifically as a MIDI controller because almost any keyboard built after like 1980, 1981 is actually gonna be able to connect to your computer as a MIDI controller. It's gonna have a port on the back that says MIDI. Most modern keyboards actually have a USB out on the back. Mm -hmm. You can just plug it straight into your Mac computer. So you need an, an input source of some kind and make sure if you're looking to buy that you consider the way that it's gonna feel for your keyboard players. If you got somebody that plays piano, you might invest in a keyboard that has like a piano-like response with weighted keys that feel, feel natural, feel expressive, mm -hmm. and then figure out like, do I need a way to tactilely control the software, like knobs, faders, buttons. I've got this Nano Control 2 right here, which is a really inexpensive MIDI controller mm -hmm. that I just set on top of whatever keyboard I use, wherever I'm leading worship, wherever I'm playing keys, and I've got this just pre-connected to my computer, so I, I can know that I have this control available to me. This is only $60. You can, you can get on Sweetwater, on Amazon. Yep. So those are the input sources that you need. And if you have an older keyboard and you're not sure if you can use it as a MIDI controller, generally like a $10 to $20 adapter cable is all it takes to connect it to your computer. Setup is, is usually just kind of plug and play from that point on. So don't be intimidated by the hardware connections that you need to make. Yeah, and the important thing to understand here is <clears throat> this computer is what's generating sounds, mm -hmm. not this keyboard. It might be hard to wrap your mind around if you're new to MIDI control and how this works, but yeah. this is just telling the computer what notes it's playing and what sounds to do. It also can tell the computer, hey, if you have these programs, I can hit this little pad button or this fader or knob and it will control those parameters with inside mm -hmm. main stage or whatever software you're using. So yeah. uh, I love going this route. Yeah, the software is not like a pedal board yep. for the key sounds. It's actually the brain. It's the whole center. This is just telling the software what to do. Great, so we have our input device, the, yep. the MIDI controller, it, mm -hmm. whether it's the keyboard or like the nano control too for parameter and adjusting our settings. We take the USB out of either of these devices, we get it to the computer, like what yep. you have here, and now we're at the computer. What do we do here? Well, there's, there's some options here on the software side, but you need some sort of host that can hold or contain and play back the sounds that you choose that you want to use. So some of the most popular ones in the worship space, like you've already mentioned Mainstage. Mm -hmm. Ableton Live is another really popular host option. And then there's software plugins that contain synthesizer and piano sounds from plugin uh, manufacturers like Omnisphere 2 from Spectrasonics, which is a really popular synth plugin. It's all over Hillsong albums. It's all over Elevation albums. Um, and there's piano plugins that give you really great piano sounds from companies like Native Instruments. Uh, but you need a, a host or a central brain. And for most folks, that can be Main Stage 3. With Ableton Live, uh, there aren't as many built-in included sounds. So oftentimes you're looking at a bigger investment up front in Ableton and buying some uh, expansion plugins like Omnisphere 2, uh, some piano plugins to actually flesh out the sounds that you have available. Yeah. But there's some considerations there. There's, there's uh, options for every budget. Yeah. If you're using a Windows computer, that's all you have available, then go the Ableton Live route. That's mm -hmm. your best option. Um, you could even get Ableton Live intro, um, yeah. and there's even templates that you can use to, to have some great sounds with that. Um, and that's only 100 bucks. So you could really have a, even a budget-friendly Windows setup yep. and, and to produce some of these uh, same sounds that we're about to, or that we've already heard. So far, we've covered the input device with our keyboard, and now we we got the, the MIDI notes going into the computer, which is then reading those notes with Mainstage, Ableton, Omnisphere, one of the pieces of software. But now we get to send that sound to our front of house sound console so the congregation can actually hear it. So how do we do that? Well, this is a, an area where folks can get really confused or not quite know the best way to approach it. Um, you can buy an external audio interface that connects to your computer over USB, and it's designed for live music, right? That these are designed for musicians who want to use their computers who need to get the audio out. Uh, but that can be somewhat of a financial investment. If you're just starting out or if you're not even sure if you want to implement this live, 
you can use the headphone jack as you're testing out this rig or even as you're initially implementing it, you can just get a simple adapter cable that plugs into the headphone jack and gives you a couple instrument outs that you can plug into a direct box and then run to your soundboard. Now, is that a long-term solution for some folks? They end up feeling a little limited by that. You gotta make sure you got Do Not Disturb turned on. You gotta make sure that the levels are dialed in so you don't clip or distort. Um, but if you're just testing the waters, start with that, see if it works for you. And then once you decide like, gosh, this type of setup software base is the way we wanna go, that's when you can start to think about investing some more financial resources into setting up the rig to be the best it can be. One of my favorite audio interfaces for getting started with audio interface is the PV USB P. It mm -hmm. actually just has two XLR outputs on it, so it's ready to go right into your sound system or your yeah. stage box, right. and has a USB on the other end to go on your computer. So I'll make sure to link that video here so you can check, check out that audio interface. Um, and it's cool because you go into the software, like here on main stage three, you just go to preferences, and then you go to audio, and then this is where you tell it where you're sending audio out from. Yep. Um, so here you can see we have a Scarlett 2i4 USB selected, and it's sending audio to that audio interface, and then from there it's going to the sound console. And maybe just unpack to the benefits of using an audio interface versus the headphone jack to DI when it comes to pro your computer processing this information. Yeah, so there's, there's some potential benefits here because Computers aren't designed necessarily for pro audio output. Audio interfaces have a dedicated processor inside that's only doing the work of processing your audio in real time. So when you play notes on your keyboard, it goes to your computer and then it goes to your audio output and there's a little tiny amount of delay between you, when you play a note and when you hear it and that's called latency. Sometimes using an external audio interface can reduce that delay so that it feels more responsive. If you have an older computer or an underpowered computer or on the lower end of things, using an audio interface can really help things feel more responsive, less sluggish. Because if you're playing, especially like piano parts or rhythmic parts, if there's any delay in there that you perceive at all, it can make it really hard to feel the music because you have to sort of play ahead of everything. And that's not a good place for a musician to be because you'll, you'll tend to rush the song or your rhythm uh, won't be consistent. So that's one big benefit. And the other is separation from everything else that's going on in the computer and this, this total isolation. And you can have a big increase in audio quality as well, just depending on the audio interface. At the lower end of things, you're probably gonna get comparable audio quality, but you still get the benefit of isolation and high quality uh, in, in regards to reliability, right? Like it's a lot easier to bump your headphone jack and have it crackle than for the USB rig to become completely unplugged. So there's pros and cons on both sides, uh, but, but definitely worth considering, even up front. So we talked about the MIDI control device, the computer, running the, our digital audio workstation. Here's main stage. We've got the audio output device, the interface. Um, the last thing I want you to tell us more about is what am I looking at here in main stage? Because I don't think main stage, the $30 app, automatically comes with these settings for worship piano, warm pad, worship pad, mm. and retro bells. So, dude, I know. Well, you know about this because you made this. So tell us more about uh, this Sunday Sounds product. Yeah, so this is a template we designed for Main Stage 3 that's called Sunday Keys. And when I was uh, at a church, I was on staff at a church several years ago, and we were trying to play Hillsong Young and Free songs with no budget. We didn't have a click track, so we couldn't run backing tracks, and we needed to find a way to nail these sounds. So I started testing the waters with Main Stage, and I actually had a really hard time finding the sounds that I was looking for. So I started to experiment with the plugins and resources that Mainstage had and figure out ways to build sounds from scratch inside the software. And it ended up kind of turning into this template product that's called Sunday Keys that has like a simple visual layout on screen where you've got sounds organized by section where they have a label at the top and some on-screen controls that you can interact with. And we've designed a, a big library of sounds that's just curated for modern worship music. So main stage uh, on its own comes with thousands and thousands of presets, but they're designed to cover tons of genres that might not be relevant to worship music. Um, in Sunday Keys, everything that you can select is designed to be dialed in and do something specific uh, that, that is relevant for modern worship music. So you've got pads that are awesome and ambient and shimmery. You've got synth bass, you've got arpeggiated sounds like we talked about earlier. Huge, op uh, huge number of options for different types of worship piano sounds. And the cool thing is you don't have to own any expensive third-party plugins or sample libraries. 
Everything we've done is programmed within Main Stage 3. So if you pick up Sunday Keys, then you're going to get the visual workspace, and you're going to get this big library of sounds that are all dialed in uh, without having to buy a bunch of expensive plugins. And that, folks, is how you go about building a keyboard rig for your worship band. So you may be a little overwhelmed with all of the gear and software that you, you see here, and or maybe some of you want to know, okay, where can I find all this stuff? I'm gonna link my worship ministry toolkit below this video. You can download that toolkit. It's a spreadsheet containing everything I use and all my recommendations for gear and software for worship. I'm gonna list all that stuff in there, including this actual keyboard controller. I know a lot of you are gonna, gonna ask. This is the Akai Professional MPK 88 um, Hammer Action Controller. Um, but we'll list everything in that toolkit. Download that free toolkit, you'll have access to that. We're also going to link the Sunday Keys template that you can use within Mainstage. So you can go head on over to David's website, sundaysounds.com, and pick that up for your worship keyboard rig. If you want to take this training a step further, I want to invite you to check out worshipleaderschool.com, where we've created an entire masterclass on the topic of worship keyboard. And this class is designed to help you as a worship leader equip and empower the keyboardist in your band. So we dive super in depth to a lot of this stuff we just kind of touched on briefly here today. And it's taught by the master himself, David <laughs> Faltzgraf. So go to worshipleaderschool.com to learn more and join today. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button and share it with your friends in worship ministry. You can check out some related content right over here. And don't forget to subscribe to the Church Front channel so you can continue to receive our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry.